Hi everyone, week seven of our MPA 545 Conflict Resolution and Labor Negotiations course. Christy Giannone back this week talking about more conflict management, dispute resolution design, and training for the workplace. So this first um, resource that I found is actually the LCW or Libra Cassidy Whitmore client update. This is a labor negotiations attorney's office. They do a couple different things for public and private sector, but mostly work with um, public sector clients. And they have a lot of great resources and case law of, you know, conflict dispute resolution cases that they're working with agencies on. So it's it's a great resource for anybody kind of to look at real life cases of arbitration, negotiation, facilitation, all of these other ADRs that we're learning about. So for this particular case, there was a deputy sheriff that had a um, grievance over some FTO pay turned into an arbitration and the um, union was requesting clarification on the grounds the union wanted more than um, two years after the original decision became final and binding. And so they made this request and LCW was able to prove that the union was not simply seeking to clarify um, the arbitration award, but was actually trying to reopen it or correct the arbitration decision. And so this was a real life case that happened and um, kind of just goes to show the, the walkthrough. I think a, a training that would be really helpful um, would be to give all of the employees of this agency basic ADR training, kind of understanding what arbitration is, what you can do, and clarification of their labor contract um, stipulations, which was caused in causing the grievance in the first place. Next, this was a journal article for dispute resolution design um, called We Can Work It Out, and it was talking about dispute resolution system design for bankruptcy court, which was very interesting. And what I liked about this journal article is it talked about how difficult the process can be. Um, and so it talks about that you really have to have an open mindedness, patience, perseverance, um, and a humbleness to negotiate the obstacles um, that are required for su successful dispute resolution design innovation. A real life situation that I can think that, you know, this dispute resolution design would work for is, um, you know, if there was a, a really tedious, long negotiation process with the, with the city and the unions um, where you kind of went to PERB, went through fact finding, now you've got this contentious um, area. And during that, you know, you found out, you know, this, the process for our um, resolution system design is really convoluted. Our employees don't understand it. And that's making them angry that they feel like they don't have a voice or that they can't come to somebody um, with the problems that they feel like they are having. And so I think utilizing dispute resolution design to clarify what those levels actually are. So you could say, okay, this is our grievance process. This is actually what a grievance would be. Um, from there, if that doesn't work, then you know arbitration. And then from there, we'd kind of continue on. So I think that um, having a good uh, dispute resolution design is really important. And that's why I really liked this next resource as well, which is from the Stitfield um, Handy Group, and they offer professional development programs. And so this graphic really caught my eye. Um, and they are part of the ADR chamber is the largest provider of dispute resolution services in the world. And it talks about, um, you know, the organizations that have unionized environment have these dispute resolution systems established through their collective agreements, but it doesn't mean that the workplaces um, shouldn't undertake like a system design analysis to determine how to improve those systems. Um, so employees and management would have to work together to design that process and it would benefit the people from both inside and outside the organization, which is what we're trying to do as a public government, right? We wanna make sure that we are um, efficient public servants so we can provide the best possible community services to uh, the cities or the counties that we work for. So I think um, this resource was great to kind of do a visual example, and I think this could be tied into a training. Um, so building off of the same scenario that could happen in a public sector that I was talking about on the last slide, if you had a county, um, you know, education system, a city who had just gone through some really tough, contentious labor negotiations where they um, were sitting at the labor negotiations table after good faithful um, bargaining. They didn't end up getting an agreement. They go to impasse. They do PERB. 
fact finding, um, you know, go through all of that process. And, and then, you know, at some point we either impose a contract or we come to some sort of agreement, the environment can be really tough for employees. And it makes all the other um, associations or union that are going to be coming up on bargaining a little nervous. And so I think having this dispute resolution design um, be incorporated into some sort of training so everybody is on the same page of understanding the systems that were established through collective agreements is going to make it a whole lot easier easier. So both parties um, being, you know, maybe administration and the supervisory staff and then our general employee group are on the same page of understanding what the system is for conflict resolution for these ADRs. This next resource that I found was a video that I found to be super helpful. Um, SHRM is a great resource for any human resources professionals who are dealing with um, conflict resolution, need some training um, tips. And so this is one that I would actually show. I'm going to be using something like this for my conflict that I have been working with for our papers in this course. And it talks about the grievance procedure, which is very common to resolve dispute. And this is kind of early ADR. And so um, my topic that I have been talking about that would be applicable to this is a police officer um, goes to their chief of police and says, hey, I'm, I'm unable to do my job in some capacity. Uh, they put them off and, and holding them on an admin leave so that they can get a fitness for duty exam and they grieve that they were put on the admin leave. And so from there, they go through the city's full formal grievance process and then arbitration and then it gets litigated and we move on to something like maybe e and &E. And so this training would be great, again, to educate both sides of the parties on what a grievance actually is, what is a grievable conflict and what it would mean to move forward with that. All right, thank you once again for listening to my presentations and I look forward to seeing what resources you all found as well.